Hey everyone, learn how to send over an XAPI statement to any learning record store. All right, welcome to Learning Dojo, and today we're going to send over XAPI statements to any learning record store. If you have not caught up on any other previous XAPI videos, make sure you check out my blog at learningdojo.ninja, and then going into the blog section, make sure you check out the high-level introduction to XAPI, as well as the easily track video with XAPI statements. But today we're gonna to cover how to actually start sending over XAPI statements from a regular website here and how to trigger those statements and how to capture those statements inside of a learning record store. Now I have this simple project to begin with which you can go ahead and download from the description, but this is essentially just a website that will capture somebody's name, somebody's email, and then it will send over a statement. So pretty simple that we just have it set up to capture the name and email at this point, but I'm gonna open this up inside of Visual Studio Code. XAPI does require some JavaScript. Now you can make this a little bit easier and once you've done it a couple of times, it does, you know, it goes pretty quickly after that, but it does require some JavaScript knowledge. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up inside of Visual Studio Code and let's take a look at the files that we have so far. So we have this index.html that essentially captures the name and it calls a function called save name. And then the email calls a function called save email and that's how we store it inside of a variable. And then we have these buttons that will trigger a send started, a send interacted and send completed. If I go into this interaction.js, you can see that I've created the functions, but I'm not doing anything inside of those functions. I am doing something with the save name and the save email, but the only thing I'm really doing is essentially capturing that inside of a variable and storing it inside of a variable that we can you know, use when we start to send over statements. We're going to first of all send over the started statement. And I'm going to show you a couple different resources that you need in order to send that over. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this, and the first thing I need to do is move over a couple of files to this JavaScript folder. So we're gonna go ahead and come into the ADL XAPI wrapper here, and this is found at github.com slash ADLnet slash XAPI wrapper. Now, if I select this button and then go down to download zip, it will download the zip for me, and there's just a couple of files that I need to move over. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over inside of this SRC folder. I'll move over the XAPI wrapper, and then I'll go ahead and move over inside of the lib folder. I'll move over crypto.js. That's all I need from that. I can go ahead and delete that, and then I'm done with that section for now. So going back into Visual Studio Code, let's go ahead and actually attach those two files in our index.html. And I'm gonna do that before the interaction.js. I'm gonna make sure those are in place before I can start sending over different statements. So inside of Visual Studio Code, you just start typing in script and then choose the one that has SRC. If you're not using Visual Studio Code, you may not get those prompts, just keep that in mind. You may have to type all this out. All right, now I'm gonna type in JS, which is the folder. And then inside of that folder, we're gonna go ahead and select Crypto.js. And that's the first file that we need to attach. The second one is inside of the JS folder. We're gonna go ahead and attach the XAPI wrapper. So that's all I need to do to attach those files, but there's one thing I need to update inside of the XAPI wrapper. And you only have to do this once. So once you've actually set this up, if you use the same XAPI wrapper with any other future projects, you don't need to connect to that LRS anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the XAPI wrapper here and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna to get to, oh, it looks like I missed it, right here, so line 120. I'm going to do this a little bit different than what they have set up here. I'm actually going to just kind of comment those out and inside on line 119, I'm actually going to do something very similar here. So I'm gonna copy this up here and I'm gonna paste that right there, but I'm gonna get rid of the stars and just make sure that that is all good. So we need to attach the endpoint, and this endpoint we get from our learning record store. So whatever learning record store that you're using, I'm using a SCORM Cloud, which is our, my test LRS that I have here. I'm gonna come down to the XAPI LRS section here, and then I'm going to grab this sandbox endpoint right here, 
and that's how it knows where to send the statements to. So I'm gonna copy that, come into here, and then paste that within the quotes. Make sure you do not delete the quotes. It has to have those quotes there. Now I need to paste in the secret and then the, or the key, and then the secret in order for this to work as well. Now you get that inside of your learning record store. There is an activity provider. If you don't see one inside of here, you can go ahead and click on add activity provider. And I'm gonna copy that, come into here, and before the colon, go ahead and paste that in. And then I'm going to copy the secret. And after the colon there, I'm going to paste that in. And that's how I authenticate with the learning record store that I'm able to send over those statements. Again, I only have to do this once. Once I have this set up, if I attach the same file, it's gonna send it over to the same learning record store. Now I may wanna send it over to different endpoints, so keep that in mind, but it will send it over to that learning record store. All right, so we have everything set up. Now we can start sending over the statements. So coming into my interaction.js, what I need to do is set up the statement first, and then I trigger the send at that point. So the way that I set up the statement first is by creating a variable. So I'm gonna say statements, and then equals, and then open close curly brackets. And I'm going to paste in the JSON that I need inside of here. So I wanna set up the data first, and then I wanna send over the statement. That is where I'm gonna come back to that once we have our JSON, but this is where I then come in and send over the statement. So you'll notice that it accidentally swapped that over to add event listener, but I wanna make sure that doesn't get switched over. So change it over to ADL.xapi wrapper and capitalization does matter. So make sure that you have it capitalized how I have it capitalized here. So I'm gonna say xapi wrapper dot and then send statements. Open close parentheses and then end that with a semicolon. Well, what statement am I going to send? What information am I going to send? Well, it's going to be this right here, the send statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here. And that's really all that I have to do is I set up my statements at one point and then I send over my statements at the next point here. But I need to format and create my data with the actor, with the verb and the object inside of this statement. Now I can do that by typing in JSON myself, or I can use this other resource that I want to, to make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna come into XAPI Lab, and now I can come in and add in my own actor, which will be an email and then a name. And this is really, well, we're gonna change this later, so keep that in mind. And then I can choose what verb I want to use. Now this is not all the verbs that you can actually use. In fact, if you don't find the one that you want to use, just find one that's pretty you know, similar, and then you can swap that later in the code. And in fact, if you wanted to get a whole list of the verbs, you can go to xapi.vocab.pub and you can get all of the verbs. I wanna use the started verb, but it doesn't have that listed here. So let's just use initialized for now and then come down and I'm gonna create my activity ID. Now the activity ID is very important because this is how you start tying reports together inside of your learning record store. So usually it's your website and then anything after that doesn't have to be a real website, but here I have XAPI slash simple activity. This is the activity that I am using this ID to identify this simple activity that I have. Um, and then you can add the name of it, you can add a description. If it's an interaction type, you can add interaction type information. You could add results and context and other things and um, get all of that information there. Now this is all optional, keep that in mind, but what it does is it creates this JSON. Now what I need to do is copy everything in between this first and this last curly bracket. So if I copy that, come into here, then I just paste it inside of this statement section. So that is all the information that is essentially all of my, my formatted statement here. It has my, my mailbox, it has the person, it has the verb ID, it has the verb description, my activity ID, and so forth. Now I did not wanna use the initialized verb, I actually wanted to use the started verb. So I can come into my verb vocab here, and I can just copy that ID right there, and I can replace it right here. And then I can go ahead and grab the verb right there and then come back into here and replace that right there. 
So I can swap this information in and out. And in fact, I can actually make this reusable so I don't have to have several statements. I can just send over different uh, verbs and other information like that, which we'll cover in another video. For now, I just swapped that over to started, simple activity, great. But I wanna make this more dynamic. I actually wanna use the user's email from what I'm capturing in the variable. So what I can do is delete that email right there, just type a plus sign there, and then go ahead and just type in email. That way it's going to use, I still have to have this mail to colon, but it's going to use my email as my unique identifier. Now I wanna do the same thing with the name, and I can get rid of everything in the quotes, and then I'm going to use the name variable. So it's gonna capture who the person is in the form, and then it's going to update this information when I'm about to send over the statement. That's pretty much it. We have everything set up, ready to go, and if everything is connected right, we can go ahead and send over the statement. So I'm gonna preview this right here. Let's type in Sammy McGee, and let's go ahead and just type in my email, and then let's click on Send Statement. Now nothing happens to the user. In fact, it looks like nothing really, they don't even know that it worked because everything with XAPI is happening behind the scenes. If I right click here and go to inspect element, as long as I didn't get an error, which this one is fine because this is just looking for a, a fav icon, but as long as I didn't get any other error, it should have been sent over to the LRS. And in fact, I can go ahead and double check it in the LRS, go into LRS viewer, and go ahead and find the sandbox. And let's make sure that we're sending over to the sandbox. Yeah, it looks like we are. Looks like I needed to preview that again. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on go live down here in Visual Studio Code. So you can see there is my live one. So I'm gonna say Sammy McGee, type in my email, click on send statement. And you can see that nothing has actually happened because I'm not alerting the user anything at this point. But if I go to Scorm Cloud and then make sure I'm in the sandbox, click on refresh, notice that Sammy McGee simple activity came over. If I click on that, I'll get a lot more information like timestamp, authentication, there's my object ID and so forth. So I have all that information right there. So I've just sent over this data to this learning record store. There's a couple more things that I, I want to do though, is I want to change the statement for whatever you know button was actually clicked. But I also want to let the user know that the button was clicked. So they're not just wondering if something happened. So I'm going to go ahead and alert, just do a simple alert here. And then we're going to say statements has been sent. All right, so now if I come back in here and hit refresh, Sammy McGee, jeffbad at gmail.com, go ahead and send statement, and you'll notice there's my alert. So the user knows that something happened and it's not just all behind the scenes. Now for my other buttons, I could actually just come in here and copy this and go into send interacted. And now I can go find my interacted verb. So I can come in here and to my vocab here and let's find interacted. And you can see right there. So I can copy that ID, come in here and paste that ID right here and then paste that interacted right there. Now you could actually make this reusable so you don't have to copy it and have several code files one after the other, but you do need to set up some variables and you do need to be familiar with parameters. So when you actually send over a statement, it will send over parameters instead of that. So I'm not gonna talk about that for now. We're gonna actually talk about that in upcoming videos. For now, we've just sent over some simple statements and at least as long as you've triggered these statements over to the LRS, you have things ready to go. So now you can start sending over different statements as you want and you can start tracking that information. And the more information you have, the more you can actually you know, do with later on. So you can customize future experiences based off of information that you've tracked in other experiences and so forth. So there's a lot of potential here with XAPI and hopefully you've been able to at least send over your first statement and get that connected. If you're wanting to learn more about XAPI, go into my website, learningdojo.ninja, hover over Udemy courses and go down to XAPI fundamentals. Or stay tuned to this channel and you'll see a lot more videos coming about XAPI.